You want to be a pirate. Defending yourself from the navy, attacking innocent people for loot, sailing around doing nothing more than looking for trouble. With Place 10 King of Seas provides a solid pirate game for PC. While there's a story, it's not particularly deep. The important thing is that you go from member of the nautical monarchy to outlaw pirate with amusing speed, and terrorizing strangers is more fun than living a life of luxury could ever have been. Exploring and blowing up this world in your ship is immensely satisfying. Ports are little more than a collection of menus for buying, selling and quest gathering. Outside of these, the boat is essentially your avatar, controlled with a choice of three levels of camera zoom. Controls are nice and simple. Speed is dictated by how many of your three sails you have unfurled, as well as wind direction. Shooting to the left or right of your ship, positioning and awareness of range is important. As is timing. Cannons take a few seconds to reload each time. You can even concentrate on ruining a ship's sails first, thereby severely reducing their speed. After all King of Seas is a fun, cartoonish pirate game, which makes you feel cheeky rather than evil. Windward is an open-world sailing RPG in a procurally generated world. Within a few minutes of playing you'll have entirely grasped the basics of the game. Engage in ship-to-ship -ship combat with pirates and enemy factions, capture towns, sentry posts, and lighthouses, or build your own. Turn a profit by transporting cargo or passengers from one port to another, and use those profits to upgrade your ship and crew or buy a bigger, better ship. Sailing is easy, using either WASD or the mouse, and the spacebar to drop anchor. Wind isn't much of a concern, it helps you reach top speed when it's blowing in your favor, but even when it's not you'll keep moving right along. There's really not much beyond those basics. Every town you visit will have a handful of missions, but these missions are nearly always the same and you'll wind up doing them dozens of times over. This game could need a bit more of a reward for exploration, more interesting features in the worlds you can generate, perhaps a few more options for ship management and a shade more depth to the economy. Windward is fun in a simple, almost mindless way. The oceans of Windward are beautiful, but not especially deep. Blackwake is a multiplayer naval FPS focused on teamwork and cooperation. Fire cannons, sink enemy ships or board them with firearms and steel. Blackwake is hell of a pirate game for PC. Players are not confined to a class and can freely change roles to suit the changing tide of battle. Battles are dynamic and only the crew best able to adapt will survive. Compete in a variety of game modes such as faction versus faction or objective-based gameplay and sail on a variety of ships, from small eight-person frigates to enormous 40-man warships. At its core, Blackwake is a game of teamwork, of following orders and making sure your manpower does not go to waste. Or, if you've successfully nominated yourself as the captain on arrival, every crewman can do every job. On paper that means that you can take a role and run with it all match. Become the ammo guy, delivering things to deck, Load all the cannons for everyone else, or man the sails and repair them if they become shot and ragged. It feels like there is something missing from these naval skirmishes. Some essence or feature that can throw good teamwork or good captaincy into disarray. Efficiency is how you win the game, it's what every captain is aiming for, but it's also what makes the experience of being a sailor less interesting. One Piece Odyssey is aimed directly at long-time One Piece fans and is placed as 7 in the top 10 pirate games. Instead of once again re-enacting the greatest adventures of Straw Hat Voyage, Odyssey offers a completely new story set in time before the events on the samurai island of Wano Kuni. A classic turn-based RPG in the style of Dragon Quest is an interesting new game genre for the One Piece franchise, and who would have thought that would pair well with the action-heavy world of One Piece, but as One Piece Odyssey proves, it's actually kind of a great fit. There are plenty of cool and funny special attacks you have never seen in any turn-based RPG. Those fights would have been better if they were a more consistent challenge, and it would be better if you would need less backtracking through areas you have already explored. Unfortunately, One Piece Odyssey is so easy that for 95% of its battles, that strategy is rarely required. 
But the power of One Piece is the story, the world, the art, and the characters, which do a lot of the heavy lifting in making One Piece Odyssey a joy to play. A lot of the quest design in the middle relies too much on backtracking through already visited areas, but One Piece Odyssey nails the most important parts and delivers a cool and fun JRPG. Overall this pirate-themed game is a fresh and good start in the RPG genre for the One Piece franchise, and will be a good addition to your pirate games collection. Buccaneers is a classic pirate RPG game, where the player is tasked with sailing around the Caribbean Sea in a wooden sailing vessel plundering and fighting for the nation of choice. This game takes place during the golden age of sail with England, France, Spain and the pirate nation all fighting against each other for land, treasure and glory. Players start out as an English captain sent on a suicide mission to take back a port that was plundered and taken over by pirates. Of course, the mission is a failure but serves as a good tutorial. Ship sailing and battle takes place in the first person with no option to switch to third person. As a result buccaneers can feel like a ship driving simulator. It would be nice to be able to walk around and visit different areas on the ship but there are only two spots for the captain to be. The captain can be at the steering wheel changing ship direction, adjusting sails, giving orders to fire the cannons or using a spyglass. There are some similarities to other pirate-themed games, but in reality how many different ways are there to sail the Caribbean fighting pirates? A good hearty pirate game that brings smiles to all pirate fellows and is our place 6 of the best pirate games. Black Flag doesn't just present a beautiful world, it gives you a mountain of reasons to run off and go exploring. Sail across the ocean, rob ships, fight the British, take sea forts for yourself, harpoon whales, explore large coastal cities such as Havana, and raid ancient Aztec ruins for treasure. All this in a beautiful tropical open world that's at its glowing, hyper-detailed best on PC. On land, much is familiar. Hubs such as Havana and Nassau are large, but there are no urban spaces to match the size and spectacle of Rome or Constantinople. There's plenty to do on Black Flag's many islands, but you'll spend half your time on the waves, on your ship, the Jackdaw. The archipelago map operates in a similar way to the smaller city ones, in that you are unable to see all of the available activities in an area until you've conquered a region's fort. Wind direction has little meaning. You can stop without dropping anchor and can magically move sideways into ports when docking. This game shines with its dynamic naval battles or cool weather events, and many interesting explorable areas in this beautiful open world. Overall Assassin's Creed Black Flag is a gorgeous entertaining piracy simulator packed with interesting 18th century rogues and pirates. Place 4 of the best pirate games goes to LEGO Pirates of the Caribbean. The charm and children-friendly nature of the LEGO franchise fits well with Pirates of the Caribbean. Continuing a long-standing tradition, LEGO Pirates features no dialogue and no subtitles. Characters silently act out emotions and plot points. Less complicated, and very familiar, is the gameplay of LEGO Pirates. Break stuff, build stuff, and find stuff. That's what LEGO games have been for years, and that proves to be the same here. Up to two players can take control of a variety of characters, smash everything in sight to discover hidden objects and rebuild devices to gain access to new areas. Some characters are required to achieve specific tasks, Jack Sparrow uses his compass to find critical objects that are hidden, Will Turner can throw his axe to hit targets and so on. LEGO Pirates gameplay works exceptionally well. This is due in large part to Traveler's Tale's ability to diversify level design. Though you're still doing similar tasks in each level, none of them feel too similar. LEGO Pirates of the Caribbean is an absolute blast for fans of either franchise. Its gameplay is simple to learn and incredibly addicting. Sea of Thieves is a must-have for every pirate with an endless sea of exciting encounters and things to do. It's important to understand that even though Sea of Thieves is a shared world online adventure game, it's not actually an MMO with a persistent world. This means that each and every time you log into Sea of Thieves you're given a brand new ship in one of three classes based on the size of your crew. While the smallest ship can be controlled by a single person, it loses much of what makes the sailing, 
so fun in the process because instead of working together to wrestle the waves you're running around the deck like a headless pirate scrambling, to not crash. Both of the larger vessels really demand bigger group sizes due to their sheer complexity. You and your crew will be running up and down stairs to adjust sails, steer, scope out what lies ahead, fire cannons, and repair damage at the same time, doing all of this by yourself is hard enough on the smallest ship, and nearly impossible on the bigger ones. Sea of Thieves is about as free form of an experience as you can get, which is both a blessing and a curse. Almost everything you unlock is purely cosmetic and death is just an inconvenience rather than a significant setback. Sea of Thieves is a pirate fantasy sandbox with an enormous amount of things to do, made unpredictable and exciting by the addition of other players. Coordinating together across the deck of a massive pirate ship is pure chaos at times, but it's also endlessly entertaining. Return to Monkey Island's mischievous opening confidently asserts that this is the authentic Monkey Island experience we've come for, sharp, self-aware, and brilliantly silly. It'll bombard you with gags, but the characters you meet are more than comedic props, and the cunning stream of interwoven puzzles has been modernized to keep the pace up without losing the satisfaction of problem solving. Everything is different, but familiar in Return to Monkey Island, from its characters and narrative to its revised systems for interaction and puzzle solving. It is the only pirate game in 2D and within the point-and-click genre. Expect funny jokes and an entertaining adventure with cool dialogues and a lot of humor. There's an abundance of clever ideas and fresh-feeling puzzles with a playful spirit. Your inventory soon fills with all manner of daft items, from books of undead poetry, avocado-based grog alternatives, and a few too many abandoned human skulls. Compared to the previous Monkey Island games, though, the puzzles here play out a little faster. The most obvious and contentious modernization is the art. Importantly, the art is also functional, items and details pop, and the way forward is never too obvious nor too obscure. Return to Monkey Island is a brilliant return to the series at its best that modernizes the point-and-click form. Shipwrecked brings a tropical flavor to Don't Starve, Cly Entertainment's difficult survival sim. The expansion sends protagonist Wilson, or any of the series' unlockable characters to a tropical area instead of the backwards. Navigate the open ocean and craft a boat and set sail for adventure. For fans of the core game and its first expansion, this DLC adds a ton of new items and recipes to uncover, as well a neat seafaring mechanic. The tropical setting is more impressive looking than the core game's forest areas, and the Robinson Crusoe-like feeling brings joy in building rafts and boats in order to sail around. This is not a typical pirate game, but it is a lovely survival game with a lot of sailing and surviving as a lonely pirate. Don't let the tropical breeze lull you into a false sense of security the world might be different, but it is still equal parts unforgiving and uncompromising. You will quickly find these islands and the waters are full to the brim with things that want to kill you. Don't Starve Shipwrecked is for all sailors and pirates who want a survival game without cannons and entering vessels. If you want to feel the ocean and sail for survival then this game might be the right choice for you.